Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Welcome, everyone. So glad you're here at Cooperstown this morning. I think uh, it hit the 30s on my thermometer this morning, so whew, beautiful fall day, and we're glad uh, to see some cooler weather. I uh, just want to welcome uh, folks. Uh, if you are our visitor, I'd love to get to know you and um, fill out a visitor card, and we will definitely love to follow up with you. Some activities that are coming up and that have happened, if you were not, weren't aware, Mom's Day Out started on Wednesday. It was uh, really exciting um, to see all the kids there. Um, Billy and I got to go there Tuesday night for an open house. And as far as I know, I think they're, uh, they're full with like 18 um, kids. And that's really great uh, opportunity for us to, to really um, meet some new people and to serve the community. Uh, another exciting thing that happened this week was the grab and go breakfast. We did that on Friday, served um, biscuits to those who just come through for a free biscuit and juice. And just to say a couple of neat things there, one, one lady said, are y'all full at the Mom's Day Out? And so, you know, more people, just the child care in this area is really, really needed. And we told her we were, but Adam mentioned uh, to get on a waiting list. So that was uh, really neat. And then another woman, we had, several times people will say, hey, you know, I want to donate, give you money. And, we're, I, you know, we, that's not our, I mean, we're not selling biscuits. We're just trying to get to know the community. And I told this woman two or three times, that, you know, that, no, that's fine. We just want to meet people. And she said, no, what you guys are doing for the community is awesome. And, and she gave me some cash. So, you know, it's, it's being noticed and people are glad that uh, we are trying to serve the community. And it's on fr first Fridays of every month. If you're interested in that, you can see me or Adam or Donnie, but we, uh, we have some people that get together. Uh, and uh, Ms. Linda Head comes and helps wrap biscuits. And, and then we serve from 6.30 to 7.30 uh, right here at the church. So uh, put some new things on your calendar. Continue to remember, bring a friend day is October 29th. And then right after that, the next weekend is the Fall Festival. So, you know, who are you going to invite to both of those things? Fall Festival, great opportunity to bring uh, any of your friends or family with children. Um, and then the, obviously the bring a friend day and with a meal after will be a great day that last Sunday in October. Uh, another new thing uh, happening on Wednesday nights, um, still the same Meals will be doing at 6, but this Wednesday we're going to start a new class for men and then a separate class for women that Adam and Melody will be teaching starting this Wednesday night for the adults. Um, we will be, have a business meeting um, next Sunday as well. Uh, and then just some of the prayer needs I wanted to mention. I think uh, last week uh, we prayed for uh, uh, Terry Walker. Unfortunately, um, Tiffany told me that he passed away this week. So just please keep that family in your prayers. They go to Sycamore Chapel Church of Christ. It was a very uh, sudden thing. He fell off the ladder and wound up having complications um, and died on Tuesday. So please pray for the Walker family. Uh, if you have any more questions, you could see Tiffany, but it's a really difficult situation. They were in their 60s and have three, I think, grown kids. But anyway, keep them in your prayers. Um, Donnie and Jamie Young, obviously the new little girl, we got to see them last night, and they're doing really good. Exciting that they have two little ones are so so thankful for all the food that's been brought to them. And I did want to mention Andy Teasley. Um, Kara had told me that uh, he was struggling with, uh, with vertigo. It turns out he's had a, a mild stroke. So keep him in your prayers. He's doing okay, um, but uh, has a little problem with vision and, and, uh, and the vertigo. So now they, they know what, how to treat him. So please be praying for, for Teasley's. With that, we will. Uh, I want to read read a note here from Miss Jenny and Nicole to the church family. Thanks so much for taking us in to your hearts, praying for us, loving us, and helping us be stronger. All your cards and prayers for Nicole and I. Hey, our whole family has been so greatly appreciated. I hope to be better soon and back. And she is back. Thank you. Good to see you, Jenny, and glad you're doing better. So let's uh, continue in our worship this morning. Our
Our songs this morning are going to be about praise and thankfulness. Let's start with Praise Him, Praise Him. Mm -hmm. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O earth, His wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins He suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail Him, hail Him. Jesus the crucified, sound his praises, Jesus who bore our sorrows, love unbounded, wonderful, deep and strong, praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness, praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals, loud with hosannas ring. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Crown Him, crown Him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Thank you, Lord, for loving me, and thank you, Lord, for blessing me. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole and saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Let us all with one accord sing praises to Christ the Lord. Let us all unite in song to praise Him all day long. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Please reveal your will for me so I can serve you for eternity. Use my life in every way. Take hold of it today. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. For all that you've done, I will thank you. For all that you're going to do. For all that you promised and all that you are is all that has carried me through. Jesus, I thank you. Thank you, guys, and I thank you, thank you, Lord, and I thank you, thank you, Lord. 
Thank you for loving and setting me free. Thank you for giving your life just for me. How I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Gratefully thank you. Thank you, guys, again. And I thank you, thank you, Lord. And I thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving and setting me free. Thank you for giving your life just for me. How I thank you. Jesus, I thank you. Gratefully thank you. Thank you. Now before our prayer, let's sing, Surround Us, Lord. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people as the mountains surround Jerusalem so the Lord surrounds his people surround us Lord Surround us, O Lord. We need to be in your presence. Surround us, Lord. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people surround us lord surround us o lord we need to be in your presence surround us lord surround us lord surround us oh lord we need to be in your presence surround us lord surround us lord <clears throat> Reading before the opening prayer will be from Psalms, chapter 89, verses 14 through 18. 
I'm reading from the ESV. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Blessed are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face, who exult in your name all the day and in all your righteousness are exalted. For you are the glory of their strength. By your favor, our horn is exalted. For our, sh our shield belongs to the Lord, our King, to the Holy One of Israel. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come to you humbly, Lord, this morning, grateful for this opportunity to be together on this first day of the week. Lord, we remember in prayer those who've been mentioned this morning, those who are ill. Lord, we know several are traveling. God, we ask that you be with them in their journeys. God, we pray for those who are unable to be here with us this morning. God, we pray for all those who have experienced loss in the recent days. God, we know that your plan is perfect and you make no mistakes, but we know also that hearts are heavy and families are mourning at this time. And we ask, God, that you um, comfort them and allow us to be a comforting voice for them in their time of need. Father, we pray for Donnie as he leads us in song this morning. We pray for Adam as he delivers our lesson. And God, we pray that as we leave this place, we would go out and we would be disciples of your word and try to continue to bring people into your kingdom so that it may be expanded. And we ask all this through Jesus, your, your holy son. And it's his, in his name we pray. Amen. If, uh, if anyone needs a communion kit, raise your hand. We will get one to you. I believe everyone is well. So uh, as we prepare for the Lord's Supper, uh, we'll sing Nailed to the Cross. This is a soprano tenor duet uh, to start with. Uh, but altos, if you can get to that tenor, uh, sing that and help the tenors out. Mm -hmm, tenors. Mm -hmm. There was one who was willing to die in my stead that a soul so unworthy might live. On the path to the cross he was willing to tread all the sins of my life to forgive everyone. They are nailed to the cross. They are nailed to the cross. Oh, how much he was willing to bear. With what anguish and loss, Jesus went to the cross. But he carried my sins with him there. He is tender and loving and patient with me while he cleanses my heart of its dross. But there's no condemnation. I know I am free. For my sins are all nailed to the cross. They are nailed to the cross. They are nailed to the cross. Oh, how much he was willing to bear. With what anguish and loss Jesus went to the cross, but he carried my sins with him there. I will cling to my Savior and never depart. 
I will joyfully journey each day with a song on my lips and a song in my heart that my sins have been taken away. They are nailed to the cross. They are nailed to the cross. Oh, how much He was willing to bear with what anguish and loss Jesus went to the cross but he carried my sins with him there Uh, pray for the bread. Father God, at this time, uh, we take this bread in remembrance of your son who was in here and uh, his body uh, was beaten and broken for us, for our sin. And uh, Lord, it's also uh, a remembrance that our bodies here are just, it's just temporary and uh, that the, the grace that we will have in you in heaven is, uh, will make all that pain go away. And uh, Lord, we're just thankful this morning, and we take this in remembrance, and we hope we do so in a, in a manner pleasing to you. And guys, let me pray. Amen. Let's pray for the cup. <clears throat> oh God, as we uh, take this cup this morning. We do so in remembrance of the blood that was shed on the cross, the blood for our sins, the blood that uh, heals us of our sin, the blood that uh, can heal anything that we have, addiction and pain and misery, Lord. Uh, we are just so thankful for that this morning, and uh, we ask that uh, we do so in remembrance of Jesus and the sacrifice that was made in a manner pleasing to you. And guys, let me pray. Amen. time we pray for our offering. Um, we have a basket in the back. I also have a QR code on the uh, bulletin out front. Many ways to give and uh, pray with me for the offering. Father God, uh, we are uh, thankful this morning that we're able to be here to worship and that uh, you provide for us every day. And Lord, as, at this time as we take our offering, we, um, we pray we do so and give in a joyful manner because it all comes from you. And you always give us just the right amount we need. And uh, Lord, we're just thankful for that. And we do so in your name. Amen. All right, let's have the kids come down front for their song. You want to you wanna help me sing this morning? You want to go with me? No? Okay. Some Sunday you will. My God is so big. Is that right? So how does it, my God is so big, so big, big, so big, big, there we go. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God can, okay. Okay, you ready? My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are His, the valleys are His, the skies are His handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. All right, go to class.
We're going to continue this morning with our theme of thankfulness and praising with praise the Lord. Uh, when we get to the chorus, uh, it's kind of a kind of a duet. The guys are singing, the ladies are singing, and and it it, it works out. We'll do it. Mm, shall we stand? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord, ye hands adore Him. Praise Him, angels in the high. Sun and moon rejoice before Him. Praise Him, all ye stars of light. Alleluia, amen. 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 Praise the Lord, for He has spoken. World's his mighty voice obeyed. Laws which never shall be broken. For their guidance he hath made. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, for He is glorious. Never shall His promise fail. God hath made His saints victorious. Sin and dust shall not prevail. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the God of our salvation, host on high his power proclaim, heaven and earth and all creation, Lord, and magnify his name, alleluia, amen, amen, amen. Church. Good morning. I want to share a story with y'all this morning. Um, let me get it pulled up. So yesterday, Brian had sent me a text message, and he asked me to um, do the reading of the scripture this morning, and I wasn't feeling too well, and I told him, no, I'm not going to do it, man. You know, I have a sore throat. Uh, it hurts to talk, man, you know, so um, um, he texted me back, and he was like, man, we really need you, we really need you, man, you know, so I was like, uh, okay, I'll do it, but in my mind, I really didn't want to do it, you know, so later on that night, that evening, we were eating supper last night, and I talked to Katira, and I told her, hey, Brian had asked me to do the, you know, the reading, and she was aware that my voice, you know, I really couldn't talk. And um, um, I told her, you know, I really don't want to do it. You know, I just don't want to do it. My, I, I don't want to talk. But um, she gave me a look, a look, one of those looks, to where it, I felt it in my soul, you know. So I was like, all right, I'll pray about it. So this morning I wake up to a verse and it reads, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bush, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. And the inspiration to that says, God gives us spiritual gifts of all shapes and sizes. He has created within us a precious light that reflects his great love. Often we become shy about stepping out into the world to let our light shine. Let us remember that the Holy Spirit fills our hearts. He provides wisdom and guidance, and he will open opportunities for us to use our unique gift 
for the works of the Lord. So I felt like today gave me an opportunity to open up and shine my light for him. Amen. All right. Today's reading is Exodus 15, verse 1 through 21. I believe. Yeah, 21 from the English Standard Version. And it reads, Then Moses and the people of Israel sang song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The, the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has, became, he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariot and his host he cast into the sea, and, he ch and he, his chosen officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. In greatness of your majesty, you overthrow your adversaries. You send out your fury, and it consumes them like stubble. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The floods stood up in a heap. The depths congealed in, your, in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue. I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My desire shall have its fill of, of them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. You blew your wind, the sea covered them. They, sink, they sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, amongst the gods? Who is like you, maj majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. You have led in your steadfast love the people who you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. The peoples have heard, they tremble. Pains have seized in the inhabitants of Philistia. Now are the chiefs of Edom dismayed. Trembling seizes the leaders of Moab, and all the inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Terror and dread fall upon them because of the greatness of your arm. They are like, they are still as a stone to your people. O oh Lord, pass by, till the people pass who you have purchased. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place, O oh Lord, which you have made for your abode, the sanctuary, O oh Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. For when the horses of Pharaoh with his chariots and his horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them. But the people of Israel walked on dry land in the midst of the sea. Then Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a tambourine in her hand. And all the women went, went out after her with tambourines and dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jarvell. We're finishing up our series in Exodus this morning. It's a beautiful passage that Jarvell just read for us. This glorious moment for the people of Israel who have finally felt freedom, finally felt deliverance, salvation. It's finally come for them. I'm excited to, to wrap up this series with you this morning. I hope you're with me this morning in Exodus chapter 15. That's where we'll be. I always like to take time to pray at the beginning. I also want to mention something special. Some of you may, may follow the news. I don't know how much you follow the news, but, but some of the bombings that have been happening in Israel, I just saw it the other day, and I got a message from my cousin this morning. She has several friends that that live in Israel, some who, who are native to Israel that she's made friends with through, through mission work, connections, and then also has, a, has some friends that are missionaries in, in Israel. And, and she mentioned that, that one of these friends, a man that I've actually met 
uh, will soon be called up to, to fight in this war that's, that's happening there. And so there's so much happening in the world that we, we don't even grasp. It's hard for us to fathom the, the thought of, of this, and yet there are things like this happening in, in the world. So I want to pray for, uh, for the people in, in there and in, in Israel and people in Ukraine and just, just wars and things that are going on, things that we live our, our life and we don't realize these things are happening constantly. People's worlds are being, being thrown apart. Uh, so let's, let's pray for this this morning. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your great love for us. Father, we thank you for your strength, for how big you are, Father. We pray that our children, as we sing these songs, that they know that this is true, Father, and that we know that this is true, Father, that you are so much greater, higher, mightier than all things, Father. May we totally surrender ourselves to you and trust that we are safe in your strong arm, in your strong hands. Father, we pray for people in Israel, pray for people in Ukraine. Father, we pray for people in, in India who are suffering persecution for their faith. Father, we pray for people all over the world who are in situations so different from us, Father, who are suffering, that you will intercede for them, Father. We pray that we will have an urgency to bring the message to people around us, Father, that you will give us this because we fail. We don't find the strength, Father. We have so many excuses, things that come up. Father, we need your strength. Father, we need your fire in us. We pray that you would give this to us. And Father, I pray that you go before us this morning as we're listening to this song that the people sang about your saving work, Father. And may we Treasure the song that you have placed in our hearts about the salvation you have brought to us, Father, and may the world see that and know that you are who you say you are, Father, that you are mighty and you have done this work. We pray that we will believe it ourselves. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. What has the joy of your salvation created in your heart? What has the joy of your salvation created in in your heart. When you think about what God has done for you, how does your heart and your whole being respond to that? We don't have to ask that, that, the answer to that question for the people of Israel because we see it here in Exodus 15. But I want you to think about yourself because ultimately we're, we're trying to make application for ourselves and look at these people and see, okay, what has God done today in our lives and what does he desire to do with us and through us Dietrich Bonhoeffer who lost his life uh, fighting the Nazi regime and during World War II was a preacher in in Germany and he, he wrote this I've shared it with some of you before he said your life as a Christian should make non-believers question their disbelief in God listen to that your life as a Christian, should make non-believers question their disbelief in God. So what does your outward praise of God, what does your life reflecting the work that God has done in you, what message does that send? What light does that cast, as Jarvell was saying? What message does that send to people outside of the faith about who God is and about what he has done for you? When they look at you, will they say it's real? Something real has happened. Exodus 14, verse 21 says, The Lord, excuse me, then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Most of us know this story. If you don't know the story, here's what happened. Pharaoh sends the people out. Moses is leading them to the Red Sea. And when they come to the Red Sea, God lifts up the waters of the Red Sea. 
So that it becomes a wall on both sides, and they walk across on dry ground. And Pharaoh, over the course of this happening, has changed his mind and has sent the chariots out to chase them, to capture them. And when the chariots come into the water, all the people escape on the other side, and the sea comes crashing down and swallows them. And that's the end. And the people rejoice. That's what's happening here. But let me ask you this. Do you really believe that actually happened? We hear these Bible stories all the time. Many of you have grown up with them. We tell them to kids. But do you believe that God actually raised water up into the sky and the people walked across? It sure is a great story. But do you believe that it actually happened? The Red Sea, if you look at it today, the widest point is about 200 miles wide. It's huge. And then if you look at the depths of it, the deepest part of the Red Sea today is about four miles deep. It's nearly 10,000 feet deep. So think about that. That God lifted all of that water up into the air. And made a wall between it. I really believe that happened. Let me ask you this as a follow-up. If you don't believe that he can do that, how can you possibly believe that somehow he's going to raise you up to life after you die? How many of you believe that? How many of you are expecting that and waiting for that and anticipating that? I am. I sure am. So if we can't believe that he can lift water up into the sky, how can we possibly believe that he's going to lift us up to eternity? How much greater then is our salvation than theirs? So much greater. Ours is perfect. It's eternal. It's lasting. We can learn a lot about salvation from looking at the Israelites here. And I think we need a stronger view of salvation. And that's not an accusation. It's really an urging for you to say, okay, how strong is your view of salvation? Is it private or is something that's bubbling up out of you so that when other people see you, they say, I need salvation. I need something. I don't know what you have, but I don't have it and I need it. I've got to have it. These people knew what salvation looked like and they knew what it felt like. If you read Exodus 14, you'll see what this moment looked like. You'll see about the water raising up. But if you want to know what it felt like to be there, then you listen to the song in Exodus 15 that Jarvell just read for us. But before you get into this, you have to ask, why are they singing? Think about that for just a moment. All these things that have just happened, the water has just crashed on the, on the chariots. And all the soldiers of Egypt, and they start singing. Why are they singing? Did God command them to sing? No. Did he say, okay, it's time for worship to start? Mm -mm. No. Why did they sing? It's the same reason we rejoice when something amazing happens. Because you just have to do it. You just have to. Respond in amazement. That's just what you do. That's why they were singing. God didn't command them to. It's not a formal time. They sang because they just had to praise Him for what He had done. And I want to ask you this as we're thinking about these things. Why do we sing? We've just spent a lot of time this morning singing, and we do it every Sunday, every time we gather. Why do we sing? Is it just because... It's singing time. It's time to sing. You just sing because everybody else is singing and you just just don't want to be the only one not singing. Maybe that's the reason why some people do. But why is it a part of our gathering time, not just a part, but a huge part? It takes up a big part of our time together. Why do we sing? Maybe you have different reasons for it, but the reason, really the only reason that we should sing is because we have to praise God for what He has done. We have to give Him honor and glory. If you look at what was happening, we read this last week in Revelation 5, if you look at the people who are praising 
the lamb there at the throne. They're saying, worthy is the lamb. Why are they praising him? Why were they doing that? It's because he was worthy of praise. They're saying, worthy is the lamb who was slain. So we worship God, one, because he is worthy of praise. But secondly, because we were made to worship him. We were made for worship. When you look at God creating mankind in his own image, what does that mean? It means that God in all of his glory and majesty bestowed that on his creation so that they would then reflect it back on him. That's what worship is. It's looking at God in all of his glory and majesty and receiving it and then sending it back to him, returning it to him. That's what praise is. That's what worship is. And ultimately, if our praise for God, if our worship for God does not come from a place of dwelling on the goodness of God, of dwelling on the greatness of God, and His saving work in us. And it's not worship. No matter how structured it is, no matter how orderly it is, no matter how great the singing sounds, no matter how many people are participating, if it is not directed at God, and if it is not coming from a heart that desires to see God lifted up, I don't care how pretty it sounds, it's not worship. It may be nice singing, but it's not worship. Worship is looking at God and beholding Him and saying, I can't do anything else but be in awe of Him and to praise Him with all that I have. There's a song that we've mentioned before called Gratitude. It's on the radio now. and There's a, there's a phrase in it where it says, uh, all, all my words fall short. It says, I just, I don't know how to speak, but all I can do is, is raise up another hallelujah, is praise you again and again. That's all I have is a hallelujah. And that's what praise should be like for us. It's not, okay, it's time to praise, it's, it's, it's worship time. But it should be continually bubbling up in us, and we don't have to conjure it up. We don't have to get ourselves into the mood for worship. If it's already there, and if it's not already there, then we have to take a step back and start saying, okay, what is the source of it? It's God. I'm not dwelling in my relationship with God and in His goodness. I'm not embracing it. Because if I am, it should be bubbling up out of me constantly. Exodus 15, starting in verse 1, Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. What's the difference in someone saying, God is like a rock versus God is my rock. I'm sending you back to English class a little bit, talking about similes and, and metaphors, but the difference there, it's one thing to say God is like salvation or God is like a rock, but it's a different thing to say God is my salvation. God hasn't just given me a song to sing he is my song. The saving work that He has done in me is my praise. It is my song. That's what they're saying. And how is it that they're able to say that? It's because they have just seen the hand of the invisible God. Listen, they have been in Egypt all of this time watching these Egyptians worship their gods from these statues, these, these statues that have been named all of these names, and they worship all of these many gods that they can see, supposedly, that they can touch. And they, in the meantime, are being mocked because they worship this God who is invisible. And we're the same way today. When people sometimes mock Christians in faith, they say it's just an idea. It's just an idea we have conjured up to make ourselves happier because we can't touch God. People can't see Him. And yet... 
They just saw him act. They saw him raising up the sea. They saw his hand, literally. And how do we embrace that? How do we see that? We go back and look at what he has done in us. That's the hand of God. That's God acting in us. And we dwell in that. And that's what we speak out of. That's what we praise out of. That's what we share with people. Here's a question that's changing pace a little bit, but it's connected with this. Why do so many Christians lack assurance of salvation? This is a real thing. This is a real thing that many Christians struggle with. Why do so many Christians lack an assurance of their standing with God? It's the same reason so many Christians who should be among the most joyful people in the world lack joy in their life, lack contentment, lack satisfaction, lack peace. It's the same reason why many Christians don't pray. Or they pray, but don't feel like there's any power to it. Or they don't know how to pray or what to pray for, even though they've been Christians for years. It's the same reason why many Christians are really just, just bored with church. And listen, maybe you think I'm boring, and maybe I am, and maybe there's parts of that that, that get in the way, and there's certainly things, if I stand up here and just talk like this, that is boring, that's valid. But if we think about the big picture, many people are just bored with the whole idea of church. And why is that? Why are so many Christians coming and singing, but not rejoicing? Singing, but not praising. Participating, but not worshiping. Why is that so common? The reason for all of those things, it comes when we're not delighting in God's love for us. When we're not delighting in Him. What does it mean to take delight in something or in someone? It's to have pleasure in your relationship with that person. It's to want to be around them more often. What does it mean to delight in God? It means I'm not going to pray just because I feel guilty. I'm not coming to church. I'm not singing just because it's time. But I'm going to worship my God no matter how great or how lousy the service is or the Bible class is or the people around me are. Because I know who my God is. And I know what He's done for me. So whether there's a thousand people singing with me or whether there's five people, I'm going to praise Him. That's what praise and that's what worship is. And when we look at all the set pieces, all the set dressing, and say that gets in the way of my worship for God, it's because we're not looking high enough. We're looking at all of the set pieces. We're not looking at God and we're not delighting in Him. And it's no wonder so many Christians suffer and struggle and have no assurance. They have no joy. They have no peace. They have no strength. There's no power in their prayer. It's because we're not delighting in our relationship with the one who gives us peace, who gives us joy, who gives us a reason to praise him. Psalm 4, 7, the psalmist says, you have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and wine abound. And that means if we believe it, that God has put more joy in our heart than anything else in the world that we may take delight in. Now, you may be listening to this and thinking about this and saying, Adam, I feel like you're trying to tell me I need to be more peppy or be more energetic. The reality of this is, we all know how to rejoice in things. We all know how to take delight in things. When a parent comes home after a long day of work and their child rushes to the door to see them, what does the parent do? They don't say, oh, hey. They drop and they embrace the child and lift them up. The child's been looking forward to that all day. When you see a friend that you haven't seen in years, what do you say? Oh yeah, hey, how's it going? Haven't seen you in a long time. No, we're excited to see the person. We embrace them. We run up and shake their hand. We grab them. We hug them. We all know how to respond in this. And you may listen to this and think, well, well, Adam, I'm just not really a physically expressive person. Listen, 
This is, I'm only using this just for the, the connection of the analogy. Last year in 2022, when the Tennessee football team beat Alabama for the first time in years, you saw a lot of non-physically expressive men jumping off of their couches. If you don't believe me, you can go on YouTube and find videos of it, of people acting like absolute lunatics. And you saw it there. People running onto the field, storming, stampeding over one another, taking the goalpost down, acting crazy over a football game. And it's because they delighted in that. What if we delighted in God that way? What if we delighted in God's goodness so much that we say, I don't care how crazy I look. I don't care. Because I delight in His goodness that much. I delight in Him so much. If we believe it's okay for us as Christians to rejoice in all of those settings, then why do we feel God desires something different? Why do we feel that God desires a formal, unemotional response to His goodness? Look at the Psalms, and you see the ones who were receiving praise from God, who He was delighting in. The people who were teaching the people how to sing, how to praise Him. They were rejoicing, taking delight in Him. When you read Exodus 15, verse 20, this is at our closing. Miriam the prophetess, uh, Moses' sister, comes up after they're singing. Says she took a tambourine in her hand. And all the women went out after her with tambourines and dancing. And Miriam saying to them, Sing to the Lord, for He has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider He has thrown into the sea. Now let me be clear here. I'm not asking you to bring a tambourine next week. I'm not asking you to get up today during the invitation song and to start dancing up and down the aisles. But what I am asking you to consider is that quote from Bonhoeffer at the beginning. When people look at your praise for God, when people look at your response to God, what do they see? We've got a Bring a Friend Day coming up, and I hope some of you are thinking, I really hope all of you are thinking about someone, not just a person you can invite, but a person who's not a Christian, who's not in church that you can invite. When people like that come into our assembly, will they look at our praise for our great God and say, I'm not sure I really believe those people. I don't think they believe it. Or will they leave questioning what's wrong with their life? Will they leave questioning why they don't praise God that way? Think about your life Think about your praise for God and ultimately examine what's going on in your heart when you go through life and think about what God has done for you. How big is He in your heart? Let's pray. Father, thank You so much for Your goodness and for this great moment in time in history that we can read through and learn about, Father, and see the salvation that You brought to these people. But Father, put the message into our hearts that our salvation is so much bigger, it's so much more powerful, it's so much greater. And Father, You are worthy of so much more praise from us, Father. And we pray that we would sing, that we would worship You in our life, in our prayers, in our time, in our relationships, Father. Not just in our time when we gather together, Father, but through our lives, Father, that we are considering You And when we have moments where we feel like we need to lose our patience or lose our peace or lose our joy, Father, may we abide in You and not crack, Father, but to go back to You, Father. We ask this in Christ's holy name. Amen. If there's something we can pray for you about today, we would love to do that. If you would like to be baptized at this time, we can do that today. We can begin talking about that, but I want you to come if you have a need. Let's all stand and praise our great God together.
What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my pardon this I see, nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing this my plea, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. All right, let's close this morning with God bless you. Go with God. <laughs> this is my daily prayer. God bless you. Go with God. Hold fast His mighty hand throughout the day his grace your heart sustain his power relieve your pain your prayer be not in vain as you travel his way in spite of all the lies that some may hurl. Christ is the only hope of all the world. God bless you, go with God through all eternity. My prayer will always be May you go with God in spite of all the lies that some may hurl. Christ is the only hope of all the world. God bless you, go with God. Through all eternity, my prayer will always be, may you go with God, may you go with God. Pray with me, please. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us this wonderful day to come and sing your songs and just praise your name. Please be with us as we go out for the rest of our day and our week and spread that love and joy that you bring to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Didn't know you were a math tutor. Sometimes. Oh, oh, oh. No. Yes, I need you, but I will, I will take the fifth Sunday. I, I, th I think Adam, Adam was going to say something to you. So we'll, you do next Sunday, and I'll take the fifth Sunday.